Parsha Shoftim opens with the obligation to assign Shoftim and Shoftrim judges, the Shoftuat Amishpat Zedek, to settle all legal disputes fairly. Thereafter, the Torah proceeds to give us two other seemingly unrelated warnings. Don't plant for yourselves an Asherah or any other tree near the Mizbeach of Hashem Elokecha. And don't erect a monument that a Kodesh Baruch Hu despises. The Gemara in Sanhedrin notes the just juxtaposition between the laws of Shoftim and the prohibition against planting Asherah trees near the Mizbeach. And he comments, whoever appoints an improper judge, someone who is not Hagun over the public, is considered as though he planted an Asherah tree a tree that was used for Avodah Zarah in Israel itself. The Rambam in Ilchot Sanhedrin, Perek Gimel Halacha Chet, records a different version of this comment, one which focuses on the prohibition against erecting a matseva, that rather than planting an asherah. Kol ha-ma'amid li-Yisrael dayan she'enu ha-gud, ki ilu ekim matseva, that whoever appoints over the Jewish people an improper judge is as though he erected a monument. Rav Menachem B. Sachs, in his Menachem Tzion, suggested a proper explanation, a symbolic explanation for these two comparisons. He noted that a tree sways in whichever way the wind blows, its branches are incapable of withstanding the pressure exerted upon them and easily yield to external forces. The comparison drawn by the Gemara between the appointment of an improper judge, a person who no Hagun, and an Asherah tree may therefore allude to leaders who yield to external pressures, who fail to uphold the integrity of halacha, the values and the traditions that we were assigned to defend, that they have an obligation to defend and to preserve. Rather than working to oppose those forces, those winds of change that threaten to undermine Torah, that Shofet, that judge who is not a proper judge, subjects himself and sways in whichever direction that the winds of the time happen to blow. While the image of a matseva monument, that, said Rabbi Sachs, may symbolic of the opposite phenomenon, of leaders who remain motionless. They remain fixed in their ways. The unique challenges posed by each generation demand a unique response and ways of operating which often will differ substantially from what was in generations past. While the laws in the Torah always remain constant and unchanging, how we uphold and perpetuate them must always be reconsidered. And therefore, while a leader must certainly never bend like a tree to yield to the changes of the time, he must similarly not position himself, not make himself like a monument, refusing to undertake what's necessary to respond to the unique challenges while upholding Torah, the unique challenges that we confront in each and every generation.